Welcome back to Project 2 Arrow, where I'm building an all-metal, all-purpose RANS S21 right here in my home garage. For more info on this aircraft, go check out the links in the description below the video. I also try and link some of the products that I use for those that are curious as well. If you remember, back before the tail cone was mated to the cage, I had positioned the cage side and bottom skins in order to pick up the aft row of fasteners along Station 3, the ones that overlap the tail cone skins. I've placed these skins back on the cage now, and it's time to pick up the rest of the holes as well as lay out the fastener locations along each edge of the bottom skin. I'll be referring to the text manuals starting at page 87, the parts manuals at 7C-01, and figures 10E-30-31. through The RANS manuals are all digitally available on their website. As usual, I've already completed one side of these to figure out my process, and now I'll walk you through how I did it on the other side. Initial placement was done by holding pressure rearward on the panel, ensuring that the curved lip is snug on the cage tube while drilling and clecoing in place. After that, it's as simple as drilling through the tabs of the cage in each location with the exception of a few towards the front. I'm sure there's tons of ways to locate these holes, but I chose to use a paper template, picking up the two holes that I already did have in place. A light from inside shadows the tabs allowing for marking and drilling of the template. I then positioned that template over the part and located pilot holes with a 40 bit. After it's back in place, drill through that with a 30. Since the cage is steel, it will somewhat guide your bit if the hole is just a bit off, lining up that hole in the skin. A good friend of mine, John, told me that he used a pick to reach in behind and locate these tabs. There's tons of good ways to do this. I marked the areas available inside for fastener placement by outlining the cage structure with a sharpie. This will help to lay out the rivet spacing later. You'll see that in a bit. I also wanted reference lines for the bottom skin edge, so I marked that as well. I picked up the tab mounting locations from inside just the same as before, only I added a weight to my wood chunk, helping hold it in place while drilling the belly skin.
I pulled the side skins once again and transferred the bottom skin edge reference marks I made to the other side. I then measured out an edge distance that will land the rivet line within the pattern outlining the cage tube locations. Randy has a 2 inch rivet spacing specced out for these areas. So simply setting a ruler along that line and lining up an even or odd number equal distance from either end of the available space will lay this out in a hurry. Then just mark at every even or odd depending on what numbers you used and drill them with the number 40 for a pilot for drilling through the bottom skins after placing these back on the airframe. I did end up with a bit of a gap, but I assume a more aggressive bend with the edge forming tool will remedy this. I'm also considering using some 8802 B half on the mating surface of this skin to seal things up during final installation. There is plenty of things to do before these skins go on for good, so I've got plenty of time to think that through some more. I did go ahead and order some 6061 3 quarter angle from Shelly to redo my window area side skin supports. While structurally it's fine, I just hate that this rivet line ended up not on the center line and it will be visible in the final product. I know it will eat away at my soul if I don't just buckle up and fix it now so stay tuned for a video on that coming soon. I went ahead and located the rest of the holes in these skins. I still need to mark the locations for the gear attachment hardware, but that's as simple as running a drill bit up through the cage bushings by hand to mark the skins. I plan to locate the boot cowl and the firewall before removing these for cleanup and priming on the inside surfaces. I'm also planning a video outlining my decisions towards priming and the corrosion prevention methods I chose to use or not. It's a touchy subject but I get questions about it on nearly every video and I personally feel like some folks go way overboard in this area. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to stay up to date on this project. Give this one a thumbs up if you got something from it, and let me know your thoughts below in the comments. Thanks for watching. <laughs>